Good morning. Good morning. It's Morning Devos with Jen and Carrie. <laughs> and here we are. We're at uh, or my house with the Christmas tree. And today is actually donut baking day. Woo! I know, we're so excited. December 16th, everyone. Donut making day. Right. And <laughs> can I just say that what I thought would, would be a normal household accessory is not is not I went looking for a donut cutter yesterday and nobody has a donut cutter so now you all are gonna be like you should have called me because I have a donut cutter so a good. normal household accessory I'm thinking how many times do people cook donuts in their life I don't know <laughs> And maybe it's because we had donuts growing up that I just think, well, doesn't everybody have a donut cutter? See, I've never cooked a donut in my life. I'm really excited about it. So, I do love a good donut. So we are we are cooking donuts this morning. So good morning, Rob. And good morning, Tanya. And Brenda, we're so glad that you're joining us this morning. So we are in this series leading up mm -hmm. to Christmas on the Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. So last last week... We did Come Thou Long Expected Jesus yep. um, by Charles Wesley. And then today we're going to be singing about um, Harold and why his angels are singing. <laughs> okay, I got to explain this. So hark the herald angels sing. Right. I, I remember hearing this story about a little boy who was learning the Lord's Prayer and was praying like, Our Father who art in heaven, Howard is his name. <laughs> so when I read when I read about Harold, I was like, yeah, Harold. Why are his angels singing? So we're gonna look at why the angels were singing and just yeah, a bit of the story behind yeah. the hymn. And actually you shared some really good like <clears throat> nuggets of the history, Jen. Right. So if if you've never really looked into the history behind the hymn, so first of all, it was written by Charles. Wesley, who wrote the same hymn that we looked at last week, mm -hmm. uh, which was Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And Charles actually wrote this hymn in the first year that he came to faith in Christ Jesus. And yes, he had been raised in a Christian home, mm. but once again, like that's the story of it. It's, it doesn't matter where you're born, it's what yeah. happens in your heart that you have, even if you're born in a Christian home, does not make you Christian. Right. You might be raised with Christian morals and values, you might even think. Christian thoughts, but that doesn't actually make you a Christian. No. Whereas um, I know I am born with English and German and um, yeah. and First Nations in me, but which is part of my DNA. But I don't. And even though I was raised in a Christian home, it wasn't until I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior that I became a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so that's the difference. So often we can think, well, I was born in a Christian home. I'm a Christian. Well, no. It's mm -hmm. not until you accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. as your Lord as your personal Lord and Savior so in this hymn uh, we see him just getting a grasp on the theology of what his faith is and so he wrote this hymn and then when it came to finding music for it that wow that was an interesting story mm -hmm. so the music um, was actually originally written by Mendelssohn yep. who wrote it specifically for he said this is not for him, this is not a church song because it was kind of like more upbeat, right? Yes, and the the cadence of it, it it's a little bit different. And I guess when you yeah. think church music back then, it's you know, hallelujah, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and so he actually originally wrote it for the printing press for the celebration. I think it was 500 years of the printing press. So it was it was an anthem of praise for wow. Look at the printing press. Woo woo. Like, isn't that cool? Like, that's how they celebrated things. They wrote songs and poems to, yeah. you know, essentially immortalize the celebration of it. Yes. But it's so cool because when we were talking about this this morning, the, the printing press really helped spread the gospel. Yeah. Because then the Bible could actually be printed and then taken um, across yeah. the world. So it was really cool that yeah. this song is for, was for that. Yeah. And we still... <laughs> Random piece of modern culture, in case you ever wonder. Uh, so Ryan Reynolds actually just had a song written by one of the original Bare Naked Ladies thanking him for his contribution to Canada. 
a song. A whole song was written for Ryan Re Reynolds, recognizing what he had done to better Canada. Right? Well, that's a very nice thing to do. So it still happens today. We still <laughs> use songs to recognize people. Yeah. And I just thought, isn't that interesting? Because we, you know, we think back and, oh, he wrote a song to mm -hmm. recognize the printing press. So there is something about immortalizing people in song. And so Mendelssohn was like, no way. And then this guy by the last name of Cummings said, I think that's a good match. Mm -hmm. I think Wesley's words and Mendelssohn's tune would make a wonderful hymn. And wow. They were right. This is one of the, the most frequently sung Christmas carols, like an original <clears throat> Christmas carol that's kind of been kept through the ages, so which is really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> well, because it's catchy, right? It's catchy. So <clears throat> are you ready? You got to start it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> She's the singer. I just bought her. <laughs> here we go. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. <clears throat> With with angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. <laughs> we'll it's save, a little early for that. We'll save the high note for another time. Or someone else. <laughs> Anyways, all, all of you just started singing that and you went for it and we're so glad that you did. <laughs> so this song has um, four different verses and each verse um, opens up the, the gospel and essentially shares theology. And that was the purpose yeah. of writing these hymns. And it, it's amazing that he wrote this within the first year of actually becoming a Christian because there's yeah. some really good things in here. Well, the first, the first stanza actually talks about listen, listen, hark. Mm -hmm. And that's, I love that word, hark. Like we don't even say it anymore. Or we don't say, we, parents do not say to kids, hark to me. Harken unto me, right? <laughs> we don't say that. I'm going to do that to you next time I phone. Hark, Jen. <laughs> right? And so we have these angels <laughs> saying, like, or singing. And so he's saying, listen to what the angels are saying. Mm -hmm. And that whole first verse, right? Hark the herald angels sing. Well, what are they singing about? Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. Right? And so then the next two verses are like you said. They're unpacking the salvation mm -hmm. story. They're unpacking what Christ has come to do. Yeah, it's amazing. And the, the verse one, it really is um, echoing what the angels said to the shepherds when they were yeah. going to meet Jesus when he was just first born. And that's in, in Luke, and you can you can read the account of that. It's really wonderful. And they, yeah. they proclaimed, the Lord has come. Yes. Like the king is here. And you get to go see him. Yes. And so, and then you pick up in, I think, verse 3, where it says, Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Which is all Old Testament theology. Mm -hmm. They're picking up from, the ch from Isaiah chapter 9, and they're mm -hmm. picking up from uh, Malachi 3. And what's so important is, and I didn't realize, see, this is why hymns are so full of theology. I did not realize, having grown up in the church, having sung this hymn, that that was actually Malachi 3. Okay. Where it says that he, uh, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. Yeah. And I just, you know, what a beautiful image that as Jesus ascends, as Jesus comes, it's like his arms are outstretched mm -hmm. and healing healing comes from him yeah. and and that's part of the theology right when we put our faith in jesus christ we get the prince of peace yeah. and we get the son of righteousness who makes us right with god almighty yeah. and we can receive his healing in yes. our innermost being and i'm like <gasps> like there's i know when i was singing this song to myself this morning like it was it was hard to keep back the tears. They're yeah. so, it's so full <clears throat> of good theology. It is so good. And you want to know something so beautiful about that? Like, risen with healing in his wings. Like in Malachi, that was actually a prophecy about what Christ would do in his lifetime yeah. here on earth. Because 
You remember the story of the woman with the bleeding disorder? Mm -hmm. And she said, if I just reach out and touch the yes. hem of his garment, I will be healed. Yep. She knew the prophecy of Christ that when the Messiah comes, this will be true of him. And um, uh, like rabbis, their garments, like their robes, the edge was called yes. wings. And so, so she good. literally was reaching out and touching his wing and healing came to her. Yes. Like how amazing is that? Oh, and just <clears throat> because she knew he, she knew he was the Messiah. Yeah. Okay, because I just got the, like, if yeah. we would only really believe who Jesus, like the fullness of who he is, we would not have problems with, I want to say, anxiety and anger and frustration, right? Yeah. Like I just, and I know, because I know I, I waffle, I struggle, and it's like, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I want to believe like that woman, that when I reach out, like, it's going to happen, mm -hmm. and I want to have that faith. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that God, like, he says we move from faith to faith, Yeah. you know, and he builds faith in our hearts, like, through the Word of God, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing from the Word of God. Yes. And so as we read the Word, and we read these stories, it does build faith in our heart about who Jesus is. And yeah. like songs like this that have scripture embedded in them are, are good for building our faith. And then yeah. we share it in community. We share it together. Yes. And then we, we build our faith together. And that helps us, you know, move forward and yeah. share the gospel and, and focus on what really matters. Yeah. So what's, <clears throat> oh, did you have? I, oh, there's so, I, there's I know, plenty there's more so I to say. Well, what's interesting is verse four, which we never sang. And you had said this, there's verse four, and I'm like, what that's are you why talking I, about? I wanted to do this song. I said, Jen, there's a whole other verse there that's so good that we don't even know. So read it. <clears throat> come, desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Okay. Remember last week I talked about Jesus as the desire of nations. And here yes. it is like, again. Fix in us thy humble home. Mm -hmm. Rise the woman's conquering seed. Bruise in us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now a face. Stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. I love that idea of, of Adam's likeness, Lord, a face. Like, so what does that like, mean to you? Scrub it off. Mm. Like, scrub it off. Like, that, because he talks about the second Adam who is Christ. So scrub off that sinful nature, right? That whole idea of sanctification. So here we are in verse chapter four. Listen, who is Jesus? That's what the angels are saying. Second verse, he is the prince of peace. He mm -hmm. is the son of righteousness. There's healing in his wings. The mm -hmm. third verse is, is all about the nations. It's not just about for the people of Israel. It's for every single person. And then the fourth verse is about the transformation that he can make in every single yeah. person, right? And so yeah. it's this invitation that we've heard, we've listened, yeah. we believe, and now, Lord, come transform me. And to say, this is for me. This is for me. The Lord came for me. Yeah. Um, I, I like that it says, stamp thine image in its place. Mm. And, and Jesus says like that <clears throat> we can be renewed in his image. Right? There's, um, he says that uh, if anyone is in Christ, we become a new creation. Yes. The old is gone, the new has come. And this, in here it says that, that Jesus was born that man no more may die. Yes. Like sin causes death, right? And like when we come to Christ and we give our sin over to him, yeah. receive his forgiveness, we get life and we become new. Mm -hmm. And then we get to have his image like imprinted on us yes literally and i i just wrote down second corinthians 5 <clears throat> 17 to 19 you can look it up but god was reconciling the yeah. world to himself in christ not counting people's sins against them like he actually was doing the work and then puts his image on us and yeah there's there's so much like you can do your own research on who the second adam is of christ Yep. And that he came in the, the form of a man, just like the first Adam. Um, but sinless but it's worth, and perfect. It's worth looking into, you know, in, in the fourth verse, like we just read, rise the woman's conquering seed. 
bruise in us the serpent's head. So if you look back in Genesis, um, there's a prophecy about Christ that he would come as the seed of woman, meaning that he would be fully God, but fully man. Yep. And that he would bruise the head of the serpent. So yes. he would conquer the devil. Genesis 3. Check it out. Genesis 3. And that's what I love about the whole, we talk about it a lot, the tenor of scripture. Mm -hmm. That follow the story all the way through. So Jesus was first mentioned in Genesis 3. You know, the, say, uh, the serpent's going to nip at his heel, but he's going to crush his head. And mm -hmm. that's what, what uh, Wesley's talking about here. And then when you flip over to Revelation 12, the end of the story is that the, the virgin will have a child and he'll be taken up to God. And this whole idea of it's, it's like the Lord is finishing out the story. And so it's so like this hymn is, is I want to say, catching up all of those little points. Yeah. All of those little points. And so when you sing this season, when you sing, hark the herald angels sing, listen. As the first thing you need to do is listen and then lord would you speak your truth to me it's mm -hmm. full of scripture and then our response needs to be in my mind as i read it lord would you um would you stamp your image in its mm -hmm. place oh that's so good yeah and you know the the image and the attitude of christ is described so well in philippians that Jesus did not consider equality yes. with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant. And he humbled himself and became obedient to death, yes. even death on a cross yeah. for, for us. And like that's yeah. the imprint and the, the attitude that, that we get to have. And, you know, I, when you just said um, hark means listen, I think about um, Jesus, like when he was transfigured on the mountain. Yeah. And... The, the, some of the disciples got to see him in his glory. The voice that came from heaven said, this is my son, listen, listen to him. him. And look at what he says in the word and yes. what he says with his life. And you know, what, what stood out to me here is um, in verse three of this hymn, it says, mild he lays his mm. glory by. Like he took off his glory in heaven to be humbled and and become like us. And that was because he was born that we should no longer die. Yeah. And that's the kind of image that we yeah. get to to carry like to have that attitude and you know even I think going into you know Christmas and New Year's and being with family and stuff like to, I just want to have that attitude in myself. Like yes. Jesus set aside everything to, to make everything possible for us. He said, I've come and you've helped me have life and life to the full and yeah. eternal life. And like, just keeping that perspective is like, that's why I'm here. Yeah. And that's why I'm with family. And that, you know, that's our sole purpose is to yeah. love him and then make him known in a humble way. And yeah. I think this hymn is just such a great reminder of that. It's all about making him known. And so we encourage you to play those Christmas hymns loud. And uh, and when you hear them playing in the store, like just join in the praise. Mm -hmm. Because I always find it very interesting, all of the Christian hymns that are played in stores. And you just, my heart rises a little bit. And I'm like, Lord, may your word always be declared. Yeah. <laughs> Would you pray for us this morning? I'd love to. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for giving your son for becoming humble and showing us how to live and giving us eternal life through Christ. Mm -hmm. I just thank you for the simple and yet complex gospel. And it's such good news. Thank you for the way that you wrote your story of declaring the good news. And I just pray for everyone listening and for our own hearts too, that we would know this good news. Yes. deep in our heart and then live that out for your glory just looking at you Jesus that you set aside everything for us so thank you so much that we we want to listen to you and what you're saying mm. in Jesus name amen. amen amen all right our dear friends it was so good to have you it this was morning. so good to be here and it was so nice to see all you guys on there and Hope you have a wonderful day and a Merry Christmas. We have one more next week. 
Yeah, so, we do. So you'll have to <laughs> tune in next week to see which hymn we're going to, Christmas hymn we're going to look at. So until then, remember to like, share, go outside today. It's going to be really windy, so make sure you strap on everything. But go with this, with this knowledge that you've learned today. Ask the Lord, how do I help my community experience you? All right, we'll see you later. Bye.